here's a Stokes theorem problem. This is number 10 on page 1097. We've got a vector field F is xyi plus 2zj plus 3yk. And we're trying to evaluate the integral over a curve of this vector field. And it's the intersection of a plane, a sloping plane, x plus equals 5, and a cylinder with a z-axis. Axis is being the z-axis. So there's our cylinder. Let me just use red, I guess. And then x plus z equals 5, that's something that slopes up as it goes, or sorry, down as it goes toward us. So z equals 5 minus x. And it doesn't slope at all in the y direction. And so that's going to uh, intersect that, this cylinder, in uh, an ellipse, something like this. And so that's, that's the curve. Well, that's a somewhat complicated curve. We could just go ahead and parameterize it directly. It wouldn't be so bad to do this one directly. But the idea is to use Stokes' theorem here to get the answer. And oh, it also says this is oriented counterclockwise as viewed from above. So if you view it from above, it's going counterclockwise. And so it's going like this. Well, w if we're going to do this as Stokes' theorem, it has to be the only time Stokes' theorem applies is when C is the boundary of some surface. But that is the boundary of this flat elliptical region in this plane, where x squared plus y squared is less than or equal to 9 now. And this is still a true fact. That doesn't change to less than or equal to. So there's a geometric fact you have to observe, that this, this tilted curve is the boundary of this elliptical region. You really can't do this without some idea of the picture. And then it's going to be the curl, oops, curl of f dot ds. Now there's some cases where Stokes' theorem just is, it really provides a huge simplification. This is not one where it's a huge simplification, but it's still going to be just as good to do this as it would be to do the parameterized integral in the first place. And it's, a, it's good practice with Stokes as well. So we need to get curl f. We need to parameterize, um, oops, that's s, s itself. Sorry, this was the boundary of s. My bad. So the c is the boundary of s, and this is the integral over the entirety of s. So we need to get s and parameterize it, probably. We need to get the curl. If we're really lucky, and this is where Stokes is really helpful, the curl is relatively simple, and then it's one of those things where we don't have to parameterize. This one, I think we really will have to parameterize um, to do it, but it won't be too bad. So let's do curl f. That's just a straightforward calculation with partial derivatives, d by dx, d by dy, d by dz, of xy, 2z, 3y. And you can do that yourselves. You get i plus 0j uh, plus xk, or in the somewhat more compact notation, 1, 0, x. So not a very complicated vector field. And that's something that's always pointing in the x direction, the constant amount in the x direction. And when x is positive, it's pointing upward as well. So it's really actually more like this. When x is negative, it's pointing up, uh, it's pointing toward us and down. So more like down this way. OK, so that's going to be interesting. It's going to be pointing. Uh, maybe it's going to be flowing down through that region here, and then sort of across, and then up when it's in front. It's not clear exactly. We, that might cancel out to some extent, and we'll see um, whether we get some cancellations later. OK, so now we need the surface. We need to parameterize the surface. Well, it's a graph. Z is a function of x and y, so we could use x and y as our parameters and then just z is a function of x and y. And that's a relatively simple parameterization. But uh, what would we do achieve with that? We'd, the, the corresponding x's and y's would be the circle of radius 3. Immediately, we're, we want to do polar anyway. So it's kind of up to us whether we want to use graph parameterization and then recognize it in polar, or if we want to realize that's really two changes of variables, we might as well just do it in one. Um, I'll, I'll do it as, as one big change of variables, just to illustrate how the parameterization stuff works. In, in a way, this is actually kind of the harder way to do it, because we're so familiar with polar. But I just want to go ahead and show you. This is the more flexible technique, because it's, uh, it's an example of the general story 
of parametrizing. So if x and y are going to be given by polar, and z is known to be in terms of x, then here's our x, y, and z in terms of r and theta. This is very similar to an example I did before. Okay, so now we need to get the ds. So rx, uh, sorry, r sub r and r sub theta. So that's going to be cosine theta, uh, sine theta, minus cosine theta. And that's going to be minus r sine theta, r cos theta, and then plus r sine theta. And then we're going to get the cross product. I'll have to put that in another. Next page. So our cross product, which is the main part of the ds, that's going to be cosine theta sine theta minus cosine theta minus r sine theta r cos theta r sine theta. There's some nice uh, sine squared and cosine squared stuff that goes on with that. And the upshot is I get ri plus 0j plus rk. And there's a check for that. When you have a flat plane, this is just r times 1, 0, 1. That is a normal vector. Remember, the equation was x plus c equals 5. 1, 0, 1 are the coefficients there. So it has to be some multiple of the 1, 0, 1. And surprise, 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 we get an r coming out as the distortion factor. And um, so this is, again, something where the 1, 0, 1 is kind of coming in from the fact that it's a tilted plane, and the r is coming in from the polar r. So it's, it's a good check. Um, as, as I said, we could have done this in, z in terms of x and y as the parameters, and then only at the end change to polar, but I think this is this is a little slicker. So, what do we got? We've now got uh, ds is r101 d r d theta. Remember, don't put an extra r in here. This is the r from r d r d theta. It's already accounted for by this calculation, which is essentially a Jacobian calculation. So now, the integral over the surface of curl f dot ds is the integral, that's a double integral, sorry. Oh, and now I can actually parametrize that. So in polar, the r and theta that corresponds here are just 0 to 2 pi, because it's the r and theta for this disk down here that describes the right x and y. 0 to 2 pi in theta, 0 to 3 in r. There's my dr d theta. There's my the rest of my ds. And uh, curl f was 1, 0, x. OK, I'm going to put that in parameters, because uh, and x was r cosine theta. And dot. That's a dot product, because these are vectors. The scalar's in there in the middle, but it's just going to come out as a scalar factor. So we can look at this and see if this is uh, making sense. Um, well, let's see. Let's just push it one more one more step. We're kind of expecting some nice things to happen because this region is kind of symmetrical, symmetric across the the xz plane, and this vector field, the curl, not this f vector field. This was complicated, but the curl turned out to be simpler. The one zero x didn't depend on y, and had some simple behavior. So we're expecting some sort of cancellation, but not maybe not the whole thing to cancel because it's always going forward. So note, the thing is always going forward because of the 1. Remember, the vector field here is 1, 0, x for the curl. It's always going forward, and so that's going to give uh, a certain contribution to the, the integral. Uh, but the, the, the up and down part, that's going down here and up here. Maybe that's going to cancel. And indeed, that's what we discover when we do that integral. We get integral 0 to 2 pi integral 0 to 3. When we do that dot product, we get r uh, plus r squared cosine theta, dr d theta. Well, 0 to 2 pi cosine theta, that's just going to die. And that's that cancellation that we kind of expected. And then the rest of the integral is really easy, and you get 9 pi. Okay. And then I'll leave you to check, did I use the right orientation? I did not actually check here 
Is this going up or down? And should it be going up or down? What's the right orientation for this to get Stokes' theorem to work? And you can check that.